The fans are not yet in their seats. In fact, the doors haven't even opened. Maybe the meeting for the production team or the talent hasn't even occurred. But you know the value in walking the ring extra early. And if for any strange reason you don't know the value of walking the ring, be glad to know. That's the topic today on Till We Make It. I'm Mike Quackenbush. This is Till We Make It and the way we frame this shot. You don't know if I have pants on. Today on the program, I'm going to talk about this. The value of walking the ring and three things you need to be on the lookout for every time that you do. The first thing you're going to do when you walk the ring is make sure you cover the entire surface area and check to see if any boards are out of place. They can shift during practice and during performances. So the ring that you might be in, if it has just been erected, is probably in square. But if it's used for other purposes, it's entirely possible boards are out of place. Not only could the boards have slid around on the floor, they also bow over time. It could be bowed up or down or maybe to the side. And this can create a hole in the floor of the ring, which is a danger to the performers. It's easy for a foot to get trapped in a hole like that, and that's how ankles get sprained, twisted, or broken. So if you discover that anything is amiss with the boards that make up the floor of the ring, you've got two options. If it happens to be your ring, you probably already know what to do, right? You're gonna pop that canvas off, remove any padding, carpeting, foam, or anything else that's on top of those boards, and make sure that everything is pushed back into square so that there are no holes in the floor of the ring. But if it's not your ring, you need to seek out whomever is the head or captain of ring crew. And if the place where you happen to be plying your trade is staffed with responsible people, that head or captain of ring crew will be delighted that you brought this issue directly to their attention so that it can be handled before the first match goes to the ring. The second thing you're going to want to look for when you walk the ring is the tension in the ropes. You might even get up to running speed, hitting them back and forth and doing a few laps. You want to check that the tension is right in the ropes. Now, keep in mind, sometimes before the performance, the ropes have not yet been tightened up. So this is the sort of thing that you might want to ask a member of ring crew about. Is this the tension we're going with for the show? And if what you find is that the tension is wrong in the ropes, or two of the three are tense, but one of them is loose, it probably means that the ropes were tightened in the wrong order. So if you happen to be working in a ring where the top rope is very tense and the bottom rope is very tense, but the middle rope has slack in it, this is an opportunity for you to show off your knowledge and expertise by making this recommendation to a helpful member of the ring crew. The tension in the ropes needs to be removed. They need to be loosened at the turnbuckles until they all have slack. And then the ropes need to be retightened from the bottom toward the top, not the reverse. You don't want to work from the top down because of the way the ring posts should work, keeping tension in the ropes until finally brought back into square. An easy way you can detect a problem with the tension in the ropes if you can't get in the ring beforehand is to look at the corner posts. If the corner posts are bowed for whatever reason inward, they are overly tight. And if they are bowed outward, it's possible that not enough tension has been brought to the ropes to bring the ring into square. And a quick visual reference is sometimes all you need to know that something is amiss. Again, this is the exact sort of thing that a very responsible head of ring crew wants to be advised of. Any kind of problem with the ring, including the ropes, and including number three, which are the turnbuckles. And just so you and I are on the same page about what I mean, the turnbuckles are everything in the corner, that complete apparatus. I'm not just talking about the turnbuckle pad, I'm talking about the turnbuckle, the tool itself, that connects the ropes to the corner post. And there's a number of things that could go wrong with the turnbuckles. Number one is the turnbuckle itself could be stripped. And you'll notice this has allowed it to pull away from the corner post. If the other three turnbuckles have been over tightened, it can compensate for this to a certain degree. Nevertheless, somebody in charge of the ring is probably going to want to know they've got a stripped turnbuckle. And you also want to be on the lookout for the thing I call the danger corner. 
That is the one corner where the rope or cable ends up being doubled back upon itself and clamped down to hold the ropes into a square shape. There are usually bolts held in place with two nuts underneath some of the rope's padding, and that can become exposed, which is quite dangerous, and thus, danger corner. If the area where the ropes or the cable have been doubled back over themselves start to become exposed, not only could the end of that airline cable be exposed, and when it is fraying, it is exceptionally sharp and perilous, but also the nuts and bolts that hold the cable or rope in place can also be quite sharp. It is easy to get stabbed by those if you're being whipped into the danger corner and any part of that whole apparatus is exposed. So whenever I'm walking the ring before an event, just doing a little bit of troubleshooting, it could be my ring or it could be the ring of the people who were nice enough to book me for their event, I'm on the lookout for those three things. The boards that make up the floor of the ring, the ropes and the way they connect to the corner posts, especially putting focus on the turnbuckles themselves. And I want you to know, you can walk the whole ring. You can try to help troubleshoot, but sometimes you're going to come across scenarios like this. The ring was delivered, set up, and the ring crew has already left. They're not coming back until after the event. And that might mean you're going to be the one leading the charge when it comes to making some of these simple repairs. Do bear in mind, if you don't have the right tools, there are some of these jobs that simply cannot be done. So if you're hearing all of this and you're thinking to yourself, well, what do I do then, Mike? What if there is something wrong with the ring, we don't have the necessary tools to fix it, and there is no ring crew available to us to assist? Well, then you are gonna strut your stuff as a locker room leader, letting all the other performers know exactly where that trouble spot might be. For example, if you discover that the danger corner has part of that apparatus exposed that could stab someone, you're gonna call everybody's attention to it. Let them know which corner represents danger and tell them, stay out of that corner during the show today. Or what if there's a hole in the floor of the ring that cannot be avoided? Find a way to mark that. You could take a bar of soap and make some kind of indication on the canvas that might seem innocuous to where the fans are looking at it from, but from someone who is standing in the ring looking down at the canvas, it's a very clear mark that something is amiss. I hope that you found this information useful. And if you did, please subscribe, like, and ring the notification bell to please that YouTube algorithm. Share this channel with fellow pros. You keep on being awesome. I will keep on making the video. And together, we will keep on faking it.